So I have a question for you all. Do LNG terminals make any sense for Oregon? No! Will they enhance our fishing and our farms? No! Will they make any single community in Oregon safer? No! Will they help us tackle global warming? No! Are they a fit with Oregon values? No! You all have it just right. No is the right answer. Because LNG is a big mistake for global warming emissions. You know that this plan would put millions of tons of global warming emissions into the atmosphere right when we're trying to say, you know what, if we don't tackle global warming, we're going to have a world that is 2 to 5 to 9 degrees warmer in just 50 years, and that destroys the ecosystems of the planet. What's more important, putting in this LNG terminal or protecting our children and our planet? Children and our planet, you bet. And billions of dollars would go into the infrastructure. Wouldn't it make a lot more sense to spend those billions on research and development of alternative fuels? Let's develop. Yes, absolutely. Wouldn't it make sense to spend those billions on a 700-fold increase in solar power? And wind power? and wave power, yeah. and geothermal power. Yeah. And biomass. Wouldn't it make sense to spend those billions creating livable family waste jobs here in Oregon, sustainable, enduring jobs? Yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to know this. Does this project do damage to Coos Bay if there is a natural tsunami? Yeah. Yes. Does it choke up the channel because of safety and terrorist concerns? Yes. And what about the Columbia Shipping Channel, a lifeblood arterial channel for our economy? Does this help the channel, the Columbia Channel? No! And what about this issue of a terrorist threat? Isn't this just one big floating bomb? Yes! So, a lot of damage would be done over the course of a 600-mile pipeline to our families and farms, our fishing and our, our, our forests and farms. But what about property rights? Damage done there as well. Yeah. I was down in Roseburg. Anybody here from Roseburg or Roseburg Island? Yeah. And I can tell you, people came out to tell me this is not right for us either. And I'm glad to see Roseburg up here. And that's, I come from Roseburg, so I'm really glad to see you here. <laughs> so this is the thing. Why are we building a terminal to provide LNG gas to California? So let's say this. Let's say no to California. No. Let's say no to an LNG terminal. No. Let's say no to federal supersiding that tries to run over our state values. No. Let's say yes to a bright energy future. No. And yes to building and doing research and development of alternative clean fuels? Yes! And let's say yes to tackling global warming? Yes! And let's say yes to Oregon taking control of our own future with Oregon values. I stand with you today. Let's stop this LNG terminal. Thank you very much. Some people think that we're just a bunch of wacky greenies. So, are we wacky greenies? Are we... <laughs> or are we serious? And is this a wacky microphone? <laughs> or are we serious people asking serious questions? <laughs> Let's talk just for a minute about the North Coast proposals. Well, an enormous dredging project in critical salmon habitat, what effect will that have? That's a serious question that deserves a serious answer. We haven't heard that answer. Will this really address Oregon power needs, or are we simply sending power to California? That's a serious question that demands a serious answer. We haven't heard a good answer. Is the, what effect will these enormous ships that occupy the entire Columbia River Channel have on other commercial navigation? That's a serious question that deserves a serious answer. We have not heard that answer. And because we have not heard that, those answers, 
We need to take action. And specifically, the governor needs to take action. We, we know that the federal government is at fault here with this outrageous FERC siting process that has overridden Oregon law and Oregon concerns. But that's not, and Gordon Smith voted in favor of that. <laughs> but that's not the end of it. The governor can stop this process. The governor can halt the LNG terminals. They need water permits. The governor and his agencies can deny the water permits. The governor can stop this process. The governor can halt the LNG terminals. The governor should halt these LNG terminals. And we, and we call on him today to say, Governor, stop this madness. But remember, that's not the end of it. As Secretary Bradbury said, we need to think about, we need to make commitments about what we do instead. Yes, LNG terminals produce a fossil fuel that produces carbon emissions. But, as Secretary Bradbury said, even LNG natural gas produces less carbon than coal. And we still need to get, get we need to get off coal, which provides now 50% of our electricity. Not mine. Not, in the United States as a whole, we are all one country, coal provides 50% of our electricity. So how do we get off coal? We need to make a major commitment. We need to make a commitment to conservation to insist that new buildings are energy efficient. A recent study by the McKinsey Group said that we could cut carbon emissions in the United States by 28% with more energy efficient buildings. We need to insist on that. We need to fully develop our renewable energy capacity. And remember, that's a big job. We renew, truly renewable energy other than hydro is only about 3% of our energy in this country now. It's going to take a lot of work to get to where we need to be. So we need to develop our wind resources in Oregon, which we're doing. We need to develop wave energy off the Oregon coast, which we're doing. But we also need to remember that in order to make our whole country a coal-free country, we need bigger investments. Scientific American says this month, or last, last month, that with a $420 billion commitment over the next 40 years, we could develop solar power, particularly in the Southwest, sufficient to satisfy two-thirds of our energy needs. That's the kind of investment we need to make. Oregon's doing well on wind. We're not even in the top 20 states in wind potential. The big wind states are those big square states in the middle of the country like Wyoming. And in order to take full advantage of that potential, we need to do big things, like building new transmission lines from Wyoming to California to carry the power from where it is to where the people are. No offense to Wyoming, there's not very many people there. What we need so, is you in the United States Senate. So, <laughs> these are big investments that require a big commitment. And what we need to do is to say we acknowledge that. We're prepared to make those investments. We're prepared to pay for those investments. And I'm committed in this campaign and in the Senate to ensuring that we do pay for those investments and we pay for them in a fair way. Yes. That's why I've said that we need to stop letting Warren Buffett pay a lower tax rate than his secretary. Yes. <laughs> we need to stop taxing money from buying and selling stock at a lower rate than the incomes of people who actually work for a living. We not only need to roll back the Bush tax cuts, we need to return to a tax system similar to what we had under Dwight Eisenhower, where wealthy people and corporations paid their fair share. Yeah. Yeah. This is not just about Oregon. This is not just about LNG. This is about changing the country. It's about making the investments we need to save the planet, paying for those investments in a responsible way, and it's also about all of us agreeing that when we're not in the house, we turn our heat off. <clears throat> Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Paul Sansoni, and I'm with Oregonians Against the Pipeline. And I founded an energy company in the early 80s that was on-site energy. It built alternative energy plants all around the world. We grew from two of us 
to 200 employees and over several hundred million dollars in alternative projects. And we saw that energy industry destroyed by the massive importation of cheap Saudi oil. LNG is going to do the exact same thing to the renewable energy industry. LNG is not a bridge, it's a barrier. One LNG plant is equal to 3,000 megawatts, three nuclear power plants worth of electricity if they put that through a, uh, an electric cogen facility. So the three terminals combined equal the amount of power that nine nuclear power plants would generate. How can anyone conceive that that massive amount of energy isn't going to swamp a struggling renewable energy industry? Right. We are totally ignoring the potential for biomass to fill the, the gap that we have. We have forests that are being destroyed by invasive species brought on by climate change. We need to harvest the beetle kill. We need to burn that for renewable energy and replant those fields to sequester carbon. We could be doing that today. So renewable energy is available today. We don't need any LNG. Thank you. I'm from an organization called Pacific Environment. I'm the California Program Director. I also coordinate a coalition called Ratepayers for Affordable Clean Energy, or RACE. You can find us on the web at lngpollutes.org. Um, it was almost 30 years ago that Barry Commoner referred to natural gas as a bridge fuel to a renewable future. It's uh, 30 years later and both your governor and my governor are telling us that LNG is a bridge fuel to a renewable future. And what I'm wondering is how long does it take to build a bridge? <laughs> so is this a bridge or is it just a roadblock? In California, we have landmark laws that require us to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We have a state policy that requires one-third of our electricity to come from renewable sources by 2017. We provide breaks to homeowners who install solar panels and have great programs to conserve energy. And you know what? It's actually working. Each California is now using 14% less natural gas today than we were in 2000. So the big question is, why in this day and age is anyone on the West Coast talking about spending billions on an infrastructure that will lock us into a fossil fuel addiction for 20, 30 years or more? Thank you. LNG will, will be sold to us in California and maybe to you by way of long-term utility contracts that we'll all be stuck with. This is what I like to call a talk green but buy dirty energy policy. So if LNG is a bridge to anything, it's a bridge to global warming. It's a bridge, a bridge to environmental destruction in Western Australia, the Amazon rainforest, the Russian Far East, and in Bristol Bay, Alaska. It's, uh, it's a bridge to energy insecurity with Russia and the Mideast uh, holding over 80% of the world's uncommitted gas reserves. But here in Oregon and in California, we're winning this fight for our climate, for our coasts, for our safety, for our health, and for our land. We, that is the Race Coalition and all of our friends, uh, we've worked to bring about the cancellation of four LNG projects in, in California and one in Mexico. And we're doing everything we can to do the same thing up here in Oregon. We're, we're, there's a lot of folks in California who are standing with you today. And, uh, and this is just uh, this is just inspiring, and um, I just love working with all the folks up here. And um, thanks everyone for turning out on. Uh,